Okay, good afternoon. My name is Marek Libra. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. And in my talk, I will present you how the mesh of virtual machines with other resources in Kubernetes can be visualized and so better understood and managed. Something about me from the most recent projects I'm contributor of, I would like to highlight three of them. It's definitely the dkubert, which brings virtualization to the Kubernetes world, or overt, which enables you to run set of standard virtual machines in a cluster, or cockpit, which is a nice looking single server administrator application for Linux machines. My talk will be about kubert. Uh, <clears throat> most of you, I believe, most of you probably at least heard about it, but Proforma, it's an add-on to Kubernetes, bringing the capability of running virtual machines there. It will be about OKD, or Kubernetes, so the way how to run and orchestrate virtual machines and provision them with resources they need. And so it will be about coexistence of containers and virtual machines at the same level, their interconnection to build mixed workloads and provisioning them with resources in a consistent way. Thanks to Kubert, uh, <coughs> virtual machines are first-class citizens in Kubernetes, and so they are treated equally with any other entities there. Considering you have a cluster with Kubert, how can you access it as an administrator? The most obvious choice, choice you have is the powerful command line hell in form of uh, kubectl or oc commands, which are mentioned throughout the documentation. They are powerful. They you know, enables you or gives you access to all the features your cluster can offer, at least trans transitively. They can be used in much bigger scripting, as they usually are. But at what cost? These tools were developed by developers for developers. There's a very thin line between advanced Kubernetes user and, uh, and, uh, uh, and developer. If I remember myself coming to Kubernetes for the first time, I have been using Linux for many years, uh, developing in different languages for diff different kind of technologies, from enterprise application development to data management, from user interface to backend. Anyway, this was something, yet something new for me. And uh, I came mostly from imperative paradigm to this declarative one. I had to learn a lot about what everything I need to create here and there to achieve the most basic things with Kubernetes. And it didn't end with the first touch. Users repeatedly follow same or similar patterns again and again to achieve their daily tasks. And implementation of these tasks tends to be fragile thanks to the nature of Kubernetes in terms of complexity. And this approach does not scale well uh, in common IT departments of enterprises uh, from the human resources perspective, if said like that. So what kind of other option you have to access your cluster as an administrator? You can use another tool, which is having your use cases in mind from the very beginning, which is being developed with the design first pr principle. And now I am talking about the web user interface, which is being developed under the Kubert project umbrella, <coughs> uh, which is an extension to OKD console uh, for the virtualization view there. Let's consider you have a cluster capable of running of something. By the something, I mean virtual machines. What is the most obvious use case you have? You want to know what you have there. Was it, what is its status? Whether something is failing? If so, what is failing? What can I do about it? <coughs> what can I do with each particular entity I have there, considering its state? How can you do that using uh, standard tooling? The first thing, well, one of the first things you will learn from documentation is the very easy uh, command, to, to, uh, which is very easy to, to be uh, issued, uh, OC kubectl get entities. Is it what you asked for? No, it's just the list. 
to get the more complex information you, I will ask for, you need to query additional uh, objects to pass through the, through, through the objects you have to, to query them, to pick particular uh, bits of information there, to put everything together and follow the lead to other objects to look, do the query so, so, sort of grapping there or, or similar, uh, similar there and <coughs> put these bits together to, to give you the, the information you, you are looking, uh, looking for. The very, very basic one. You will definitely need to understand the, the naming behind. How is it composed? It's ever-changing. You will definitely need to understand the structure of each object you, you are querying because uh, to f find the proper information there. To uh, <coughs> understand uh, what phase the project you are uh, interested in is currently in. What, what is the processing, actual processing happening uh, behind for this very moment. So you, you will, you, so you are able to follow the lead to query, query it there. You will definitely need to understand how the mapping between the related objects uh, is set. Sometimes it's owner, owner relationship, sometimes it's more complicated using labels or annotations. This is uh, nothing standardized, it's uh, driven by the developers and it's set for each, uh, each entity individually. Uh, there's, uh, there's no mm, clear system in that and it's, it's based on how, how someone did it. So you definitely need to understand the structure, you need to understand the names and how the links are, are done and especially you need to understand how the backend works so you can, uh, you know how, how and what at each particular time to query to get, you, you, to get the very basic information. Same use case, different, unfortunately it didn't meet the most important uh, part here. Uh, same use case, uh, dif different tooling. At the first glance, in the web user interface I'm talking about, you got, got the list of the entities. Uh, <coughs> I'll try to minimize that. Uh, you, will f uh, you will find uh, the list of the entities at the first glance. Uh, their status, they are currently in. Uh, thanks to the nature of, uh, of web, uh, you can very easily, intuitively follow the lead to underlying objects uh, where the actual happening is, hap uh, is uh, at, at this very moment. <coughs> Whether it's uh, what kind, uh, the mapping behind, uh, what kind of object, uh, what kind of port behind uh, is happening at this very moment is done for you automatically. If something is failing, you are directly navigated to the point where the, uh, the particular fail uh, occurred. So you can ch uh, you you got the access to to the logs there. Uh, uh, you got access to the uh, logs there uh, and events, and you can decide whether uh, you sh should or can do something about it. Some some failures are tentative, some of them are uh, permanent. It's up to you to to decide that. Of course, uh, you got. Uh, uh, from the kebab menu, uh, possibility to uh, get the list of actions you can do with each particular uh, entity, considering its actual state. Of course, you can dig, dig uh, deeper to query additional additional details of, of each particular entity and uh, follow the links uh, further. You can by following the uh, following these links uh, to uh, you can change the view, the, the anchor, how, how you look at, at your system, whether it's uh, from the perspective of virtual machines or underlying pods or from, from different angle of, of nodes or any other related uh, objects which are there, you can just, just change it and see this, the mesh of, the, uh, of the, the same mesh just from the uh, different point of view. Different use case. You have a cluster capable of running something, the virtual machines. What is, uh, you will definitely want to be able to create that something, the virtual machine. How can you do that? If you check the documentation, it's pretty simple process. Just two steps. Create a YAML file, apply the YAML file. It's simple unless you start writing the YAML file. To do that beforehand, you need to understand uh, it's the same story for JSON, it doesn't matter. 
uh, bef uh, if you st uh, beforehand, you need to understand how the how the YAML files are structured. This this for this format uh, has been created for mostly for automation, uh, for the tasks where human meets machine. Not everybody likes it, but okay, it's uh, might be straightforward. Okay, you if you have no other choice, you will start like it for as a daily task. Write, write that. But later on, you will definitely need to understand the structure of the object you are creating. As it is a declarative way, most, you will spend most of the time uh, resolving the relations to other objects from storage, from network, uh, and similar. When doing that, you will most probably, at least at the beginning, find out that you are missing bits of configuration in your cluster. And uh, for, uh, to, uh, to resolve that, you will need to create another object there. And same story again, you will need to understand the structure, how to do, do, it, do it there. Uh, maybe after a lot of, of, of some struggling, you will find the beauty of simple, uh, simple uh, definitions. You will find a simple VM YAML file and do some tweaking there. If doing this way, uh, you, you will probably not be, a, you will probably not be sure that uh, it meets your uh, real needs regarding the e uh, intended workload, especially regarding the specifics of further parameterization dependent on, on the actual load. Same story, uh, different tool. You can leverage the knowledge of someone else in form of wizards. The only Think you need to, uh, th to you need to know to create a virtual machine or other entity uh, this way is uh, why what are you creating why are you doing so and what is the intended load or workload uh, why you are creating that so provide some metadata name namespace where it will live in uh, templates I will talk about it later. Uh, what is the source of the virtual machine? Where, where it will be booted from? Pixie boot, URL, ISO, or container image? <coughs> uh, what is the uh, target operating system? This is pretty <coughs> useful information for the backend, how to set up things properly, uh, not only on the Kubernetes level, but uh, uh, on the QEMU level as well. Uh, and something about the size because you know uh, what, what will be there, so uh, how, how big the virtual machine should be. Uh, the, the virtual machine will not, if, uh, will not live in isolation, so uh, uh, using wizard step, steps, uh, networking, storage, uh, these parts are shared with other, other, other uh, parts of Kubernetes, this, this is fully reused uh, with pods. Uh, when you're creating them, uh, so once this is proper, set uh, for one, it can be reused by, by others. Uh, sele select the uh, storage PVCs, PVs, uh, storage class, which did not make it to this presentation. Unfortunately, click, click, next, next, create virtual machine, and you will end up most probably with something what is runnable. Intentionally, the wizards uh, were created uh, Simple as possible, but still powerful enough. We are focusing on the 80%. Uh, once the virtual machine is created, the object for that, uh, you can tweak it further. Uh, there is already some edit functionality uh, implemented to, uh, to modify particular bits of, uh, of that. <coughs> if uh, we are still working on adding more functionality in, in this manner, if it is not... Uh, uh, good enough for, for your particular use case, you have still the fallback to edit the YAML files there from the, from the uh, uh, user interface. Templates. Another concept, how to ease your life with creation of virtual machines. It's a predefinition, prescription, how the virtual machine should look like. It comes with uh, metadata. It, it, it can be created with the uh, same uh, wizard as uh, as the virtual machine or very similar to, to that. Uh, you provide the metadata, the load and what, what, will, be, what will be there. Uh, networking and uh, storage as well. And once you have uh, created su such a template, you can, you can reuse it. I'm going back 
to create virtual machine wizard. Uh, you can uh, use it uh, use it there, and all the data will be copied through, and uh, you uh, you can uh, easily use it. Uh, disks uh, networking uh, is, is made uh, to make possible. Uh, so uh, disks are cloned, so uh, multiple virtual machines are uh, can be uh, created and executed simultaneously uh, from a single template. As I mentioned before, uh, not uh, as, I as I mentioned before. Uh, nothing lives in, in isolation, uh, neither pods or <coughs> virtual machines. Uh, uh, especially uh, virtual, virtual machines uh, re require uh, other, other additional uh, objects, storage, network, services. The virtual machine is exposing some port, so it, it needs to be co uh, covered by, by a service, so it is accessible, accessible from outside. Uh, config maps, uh, uh, secrets, and, and so all these important bits uh, have their pages in the user interface. Uh, there is even a generic page for generic custom resources or, or CRDs, uh, which are not uh, covered by their specific uh, uh, pages. <coughs> As I mentioned before, uh, processing of something complex like a virtual machine uh, comes with uh, uh, with other uh, um, objects being created in the in the in the background, uh, and thanks to the nature of asynchronicity, everything can fails at every moment, and some failures are tentative. Some some of them are uh, permanent. Uh, thanks to proper user interface, you can be easily navigated to the a uh, particular part of the processing and do something about it if needed. Uh, consoles, uh, yet another cool feature, I believe, uh, of, of the user interface. You can, uh, as an administrator, you can in browser access your virtual machines. Uh, recently, there's uh, implementation for VNC or serial console. If your guest machine is uh, Windows-based, there's uh, RDP supported as well, Remote Desktop Protocol. <coughs> this is nice, this is working, but has its limitations uh, by, given by the, uh, by the browser. If you want access or need access to a wider feature set uh, provided by your desktop, you will definitely need a desktop-based viewer application like Remote Viewer, but there are plenty more, more others. This is recently possible, but uh, the desktop requires additional configuration. Uh, we are intensively working on, uh, on uh, simplifying this task, so uh, it will be possible to just per click to, uh, to end up with a window of the desktop, uh, desktop viewer, and uh, you, can, you can go from, from there. If you are interested, uh, we, will be, we will be more than happy if you give it a try. Uh, it's nothing complicated. It just depends on uh, how you provisioned your uh, cluster with Qubit. How, do, how did you provision uh, uh, the, the Qubit? If you follow the recommended path, means uh, using Qubit Ansible project, uh, everything will be there by default. Uh, the Qubit Ansible uh, takes care of uh, installation not only the Qubit itself, but additional bits as well from networking, from storage, and, uh, uh, and multiple more, and put, putting it, that together. Uh, if you decided to go the harder way, to do it man manually, by starting by applying uh, uh, the Kubernetes YAML file on your, on your own, you will need to install these, these bits uh, and configure them uh, on, your, uh, on your own as well including the web user interface. For that reason, uh, there's a created uh, operator, separate project on, on GitHub, taking care of installation, reconciliation, and configuration of the, of the web, user inter web user interface application. The only thing, uh, the installation is uh, pretty straightforward. Just check the readme file there. Uh, there are copy-paste instructions what, uh, to, to call. Uh, and then you will need to create a custom resource uh, 
if nothing else, at least provide the intended version of the web user interface you are willing to install. And the operator will take care of that and reconcile to achieve, achieve the, uh, uh, the goal. Uh, there's already a walkthrough video av available. So without an installation, you can get better feeling um, how does it behave and uh, not, not what, what's inside in, in complexity, but uh, at least the interactions, how, how it is done. Uh, if you want to stay in contact, uh, in touch, uh, I will be more than happy to uh, to respond. There's direct contact on me. As as Kubert, we have a Kubert Dev Google Group mailing list. Uh, if you are interested in additional wide and deep <coughs> details about Kubert itself, uh, the homepage is a good starting point. And the application I was talking about, uh, its homepage is on on GitHub on this very first link. That's all from me. Uh, any questions, please?